Good day, everyone. For Telesur, I'm Cody Weddle in, in Caracas, Venezuela. In a demonstration of the growing relations between China and Latin America, President Argentinian President Cristina Fernandez will be returning to her home country after a successful visit to Beijing. President Fernandez and Chinese President Xi Jinping signed 15 new bilateral agreements on Wednesday, which range from the construction of two new nuclear power plants to oil drilling and currency exchange. The president says the new agreements consolidate a strategic alliance between both countries. For more now on the strengthening of ties between Argentina and China, we go to our correspondent in Argentina, Leo Poletti. Yes, that's right. Argentine President Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner and her Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping have signed 15 agreements of cooperation and exchange this Wednesday morning. Local Buenos Aires time. The signing occurred after a private meeting held between the two heads of state at the Great Hall of the People in Beijing. The signing of the 15 agreements add up to the 20 already signed last July during Xi Jinping's visit to Argentina. Now, following the meeting, President Cristina Fernandez attended a dinner in her honour at the Great Hall of the People and she will shortly conduct a live video conference linking up Beijing and Santa Cruz, the uh, southern Argentine province, where Cristina will sign the orders to initiate the construction works of two hydroelectric dams in the southern Argentine province. Uh, Cristina Fernandez de also said today that trade with China will have a strong participation of Argentine businesses and warned that those who say otherwise do it with political intent or simply with ignorance. I'm Leo Politegoluti reporting from Buenos Aires for Telesur. And thanks to Leo. Uh, moving on now, the Vatican announces a unanimous vote that will begin the process of beatification of Oscar Romero. Now, the vote follows Pope Francis's decree of Romero's martyrdom the day before. Preceding Wednesday's vote, Vatican theologists reviewed the work done by the so-called Bishop of the Poor. That's a name Romero was given for his social justice advocacy and his commitment to El Salvador's poor. As the head of the Salvadorian church, he accused the regime of the murder... While families of the disappeared 43 IUT Napa students and civil organizations participated in the UN hearing in Geneva, activists in Mexico raised their voice against corruption and state violence. Our correspondent Clayton Kahn has more. With thousands of signatures, these activists demand that Germany cancels bilateral police training and arms agreements with Mexico, viewing the Mexican government as incapable of tackling its chronic corruption and violence. Really, this crisis is the responsibility of the state, so other countries in the world must maintain a clear commitment in the defense of life, humanity, and they must not partake in commercial, military, or police agreements with the Mexican government. They say that arms fall into the wrong hands, whether that be organized crime or even corrupt police forces, provoking incidents of enforced disappearances such as the Ayotzinapa case. Although Mexican authorities do admit that the 43 missing Ayotzinapa students were victims of enforced disappearance, they say the case is isolated. However, rights groups deny the posture, saying that the practice in Mexico is widespread in general. The pro-human rights center in Mexico City, which has accompanied the families of the students, has petitioned for the UN's Commission Against Enforced Disappearances to task a commissioner to investigate the extent and depth of the practice in the country. We therefore asked the committee to appoint a commissioner for the country, someone from Mexico who will be dedicated full-time to attending to the situation of forced disappearances in our country. Since Monday, the UN's Commission in Geneva has heard testimony from the Mexican government, civil organizations, and even parents of the 43 students who hope that the UN will pressure Mexico into fulfilling justice in the Ayotzinapa case. We hope that they will force the Mexican government to allow us, the parents, to know the truth and find our children, our loved ones, and end this torture. Yet UN experts have thus far only raised deep concerns over Mexico's methods in documenting cases of disappearances, concluding that nobody really knows the number of disappeared, let alone enforced disappearances. Clayton Cantalasur, Mexico City. And thanks to Clayton, uh, former Colombian President Ernesto Samper and current UNICER head is visiting Venezuela to meet with President Nicolas Maduro. Maduro is expected to ask the UNICER Secretary General to help facilitate better relations between Venezuela and the United States. 
Maduro has also announced he sent a he will send a letter to U.S. President Barack Obama. It comes after the U.S. imposed new sanctions on the country. And thousands here in Venezuela are celebrating the Day of Dignity. The day commemorates an uprising led by former President Hugo Chavez and a group of soldiers in 1992. Chavez and the rebel soldiers reacted against the widespread repression and human rights violations being suffered by the Venezuelan people at the time. A revolutionary land law is up for debate in Ecuador's National Assembly. Now, if passed, the law could provide greater redistribution and rights to campesinos. Here's our correspondent Liz Scherfius from Quito. This is the San Carlos neighborhood in the outskirts of Quito. It is the site of a former hacienda run by the Jesuit order and once disintegrated was divided into 500 family plots. The lands of the hacienda, once growing corn, beans, potatoes and wheat, are now developed or unfit for agricultural production. Residents of San Carlos are seeking to promote food sovereignty through redistribution and collectively make these lands productive once again. In the view of residents, they would gain these rights through the land law, currently being debated in Ecuador's National Assembly. These lots are still ours. The campesinos, the same people of San Carlos, have been cultivating this land to make them more productive. This is the only land we have. What we are hoping for with this new land law is that these lands from the Hacienda are given to the San Carlos neighborhoods so that they fulfill a social function. The land law seeks to ensure food sovereignty, redistribute land, and stimulate national agricultural production. The National Assembly would be responsible for determining which lands, if unproductive, would be expropriated. If the law is approved, the National Assembly would create a land fund, providing credit and support to those campesinos seeking greater access to land. First, there needs to be incentives, economic incentives, with credits, credits that are long-term. Agriculture is a long-term investment. It is not something that you can do from one day to the next. So we need to revive the lands, commercialize the products, and have the necessary guidance. Many campesino and indigenous organizations are united behind the lands law, as it is seen as strengthening family agriculture and providing the opportunity to commercialize their goods. In reclaiming these lands and making them productive once again, the organization Fenocene sees this law as a form of historical retribution. Above all else, it is a law that allows those sectors that have been abandoned for decades to be strengthened. We believe in this, and as organizations that are united, we are going to work to see that this becomes a reality. Under discussion, the land law will work to eliminate the concentration and fragmentation of lands and provide greater access to those campesinos seeking to provide food for their communities and stimulate national production. Liz Scherfius, Delisord, Ecuador. And thanks to Liz, the Colombian peace process between the government and the FARC rebels continues in the Cuban city of Havana. The FARC delegation has requested the government's delegation stick to the agreed agenda and has also demanded that the victim reparation process include all the actors involved in the conflict, regardless of their position in the government. Meanwhile, in Colombia, the discussion of victims in the peace process is being taken up by those who have suffered political repression in the past. Our correspondent Natalia Margarita reports from Bogota. In 2012, when Colombia's peace process was announced, the National Unit for the Assistance of Victims was also created. For its director, Paula Gaviria, the discussion on victims as scheduled for this round of negotiations is an opportunity to continue strengthening the participation of victims. Victims that have already been in Havana have said that they don't want any more victims. They have been particularly generous by putting peace first. But of course, there are certain conditions that need to be met. One of them is the guarantee that this doesn't happen again. Others are truth, justice, and recognition of the damages. Overall, it has to do with people's dignity. 
todo pasando por la dignificación. For Alfonso Castillo, a survivor of the systematic killing of over 5,000 members of the Patriotic Union Party, one of the main points are the guarantees of non-repetition, to be able to know that this won't happen again. Lo que nosotros quisiéramos como resultado de este ciclo es... What we want as a result of this new run of negotiations is a bilateral ceasefire agreement. We believe that it's the first step towards a new scenario, a peaceful scenario of dialogue that led us to a point where no more victims are produced in Colombia. The FARC peace delegation has already released a proposal for the discussion on victims, highlighting the importance of recognizing the individual and collective rights of the victims. Now, victims themselves have insisted that a suitable compensation will include peace, guarantees of non-repetition, and truth. From Bogotá, Natalia Margarita, Telesur. Thanks to Natalia, Brazilian state-owned oil giant Petrobras has announced that its board of directors will be completely replaced. Now, the measure was taken by President Dilma Rousseff after the failure to account for the loss of over $33 million due to corruption within the company. The numbers showed up in Petrobras' latest quarterly report and have affected the value of the company in international stock markets. Many are denouncing repression against activists in Egypt. It comes after 230 people were sentenced to life in prison. An Egyptian court sentenced the 230 for their role in the 2011 uprising against former dictator Hosni Mubarak. Among those who will, be fa who will face life behind bars are leading political activists who helped organize the massive protests in Tahrir Square. All of them face trial in absentia. A motorist in Taiwan captured that video, that moment you just saw there, as a Trans-Asia flight clipped a bridge and crashed into a river just after taking off from Taipei Airport. At least 25 people died in the accident. 15 have been rescued and emergency services have been working into the night to find the remaining passengers. Shells have landed near a hospital in the rebel-held city of Donetsk in eastern Ukraine. The blast killed at least four people. Several people have also been wounded. Now, the attack comes as the United States is considering providing lethal weapons to Kiev in its fight against rebel forces. New Greek Prime Minister Ale Alexis Tsipras is visiting with the head of the European Union, Jean-Claude Juncker, in Brussels. During brief declarations to the press, Tsipras explained his aim was to fix certain flaws in the EU framework and not to destroy it. The Prime Minister will seek a new agreement with European authorities to alleviate Greece's debt, which surpasses its GDP. And as Cyprus is in Brussels, Greek finance minister Yanis Yaoufakis is in Germany, where he is due to meet the head of the European Central Bank and the German finance minister. The Greek minister is hoping to implement a plan which will allow his country to pay its debt with different financial mechanisms, such as bonus swaps. Israeli violations of the agreed-upon ceasefire in Gaza have come to an end for now. We go now to our correspondent there, Noor Harazim. It is a calm, peaceful day in the Gaza Strip today. No violations from the Israeli side uh, were reported today uh, in Gaza after three days of Israeli violations of the uh, agreed Palestinian-Israeli uh, truce. We have been reporting that the Israeli forces shot uh, Palestinian fishermen, also uh, Palestinian farmers in the past uh, days. However, the top topic in the uh, streets in the Palestinian territories uh, today is the fact that uh, the uh, ISIS, so the Islamic State uh, killed a Jordanian uh, pilot when talking to the residents here and even the politicians from uh, several Palestinian political parties. They were all condemning uh, such action by the ISIS. In response to the murders of one of its pilots, the Jordanian state executed two prisoners, one of whom was a member of the Islamic State. Jordanian authorities announced they will step up their efforts in the U.S.-led campaign against the terrorist group in Iraq and Syria as a result of the incident. 
The news that a second novel by author Harper Lee is about to be published has caused a trade frenzy in the book market. Lee has published only one novel, the classic To Kill a Mockingbird, 55 years ago. Her new publication, titled Go Set a Watchman, was actually written before To Kill a Mockingbird and is set to be released in July. Plenty more on those stories and others at our website, telesertv.net slash English for Telesert English. I'm Cody Weddle. Have a great Wednesday.